This problem gives us a table of data. The input quantity is time in seconds. The input variable is t. The output quantity is height in feet. The output variable is h. It's very important to identify these pieces of information before you even begin diving into the problem to understand the information that you're presented with and the questions that you will be asked. And so looking at my information here, I can indicate that every ordered pair will have a certain form and it will be of the form t comma h. So every ordered pair input is time, every ordered pair output is height. For part B, we're asked to write the data as a set of ordered pairs. So to do that, we want to match up the input-output combinations as a list of ordered pairs, and we want to do that in a very specific way. Notice the use of set brackets at the beginning and the end, and the ordered pairs with commas in between each coordinate and then commas in between the individual ordered pairs. So what you write on your paper should look exactly like this and we're just listing 0, 0, 180 to 128 for each of the combinations there. Now to interpret the meaning of the ordered pair 3 comma 144, remember that every ordered pair has the form time comma height. So 3 represents time, 144 represents height. So to write that in a sentence, after 3 seconds, the ball is 144 feet high. So every input-output combination can be written in this way. Part D is height of the golf ball a function of time. So that question is asking us, do the data as they are written represent a function? So is height, that would be the output, a function of time, that would be the input. Well, what we're looking for then is in my inputs, do I have any repeated values? Because what I want to be sure is that each input is associated with only one output. Functions are used for predictions. So I can't predict if zero goes to two different outputs. But in this case, all of my inputs have only one value for output associated with them. So what we can say is that yes, each input has one unique output. So yes, height of the golf ball is a function of time. Now, if we turn this relationship around and we ask, is time a function of height? Then height would be the input. Time would be the output. So if you look at your input values here, you'll notice that the zero goes to more than one output. So zero goes to zero and zero also goes to six. So there's a zero to zero, zero to six. We also have 80 that goes to multiple values as does 128. So we have all kinds of problems if we look at time as a function of height. So what we can say in this case for this final answer then, is that no, time is not a function of height because the inputs 0, 80, and 128 have more than one output.